Hey guys and welcome back to the third through sixth grade Bible class. Once again, I am Olivia and you are still stuck with me as your teacher. So last week, I want to say thank you to everyone that participated in sending in videos. Those were so cute and we had such a good time watching them and making this week's news broadcast for you guys. Next week, however, we are going to do it a little differently. I think we're going to cast a little bit smaller of a net. We're going to start doing it by grades. That way we get a chance to see um, everybody and see a different group of people each week. So ne this next week we're gonna focus on our sixth graders. So sixth graders be on the lookout for um, some assignments from these this week. I'm gonna send out what I want you guys to do for the video. And then next week we'll move on to the fifth grade and then down after that. But I wanna, again, I wanna say thank you guys for those who sent in videos. Those were so cute and we had such a good time doing this. That was really, it was really good to see you guys. So this week we studied, um, your homework assignment was reading John chapter 2 verses 13 through 25 and that was Jesus in the temple courts and a lot of interesting things happened in the temple courts this time. So get your Bibles open to John chapter 2. I'm going to read those verses and then we're going to have a short little discussion before we watch this week's news broadcast. Okay, guys, with your Bibles open to John chapter 2, you guys just follow along with me. I'm going to start reading in verse 13. So John chapter 2 in verse 13. When it was almost time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves, he said, get these out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what signs can you show to prove us your authority to do all of this? Jesus then answered them, Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, It has taken 46 years to build the temple, and you're going to raise it in three days? But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. They believed the scriptures and the words that Jesus had spoken. Now while he was in Jerusalem at Passover festival, Many people saw the signs he was performing and believed in his name. But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all the people, and he did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew that was what was in each person's heart. So in those short 13 verses, there's a lot of information that I've always found really interesting. First of which is we learn that Jesus is going to Jerusalem to participate in the Passover feast. Now, Passover was one of three Jewish pilgrimage feasts that if you were a Jew, you had to participate in. And to participate in them, you had to go to Jerusalem. So three times a year, you would have to go to Jerusalem to participate in Passover, Pentecost, or the Feast of Booths. And you'd have to come, or from wherever you lived, you'd have to come into Jerusalem to partake and practice these religious ceremonies and partake in these feasts. And that was a lot for people back then. In fact, we learned that Jesus was in, before he was in Jerusalem, we know that he was in Capernaum because that's where it says that he went after he turned the water to wine. And the distance between Capernaum and Jerusalem is around 100 miles. And like we talked about this before, they didn't have cars or anything like that back in that day. So they were walking or riding their donkeys 100 miles. It would have taken them a long time. You think about that. That would take you walking from here to like Louisville to go participate in a religious ceremony. But that's what Jesus was doing because he was a Jew and he was participating in Passover. So he goes to Jerusalem when he gets there. And one of the main reasons, obviously, that they went to Jerusalem, that's where the temple was. And so they go to Jerusalem and Jesus goes to the temple courts and he walks in and he is so angry because when he walks in and he sees, is he sees people selling you know, what does it say? It says selling doves and cattle and sheep and all these other things. People are exchanging money in the temple courts and he is furious. Now, 
I want to point out here that during these times, it's not uncommon that people would sell, you know, sheep and ox and cattle. It's not uncommon because they did need those animals to make sacrifices or make atonements for their family and for their family or in their sins for that year. So it wasn't uncommon that they were selling these animals. But what was Jesus was making Jesus so angry is that they were in the temple court selling these animals and taking advantage of all the people that had to flood in from all over into Jerusalem to participate in these feasts. They were taking advantage of them. And they were trying to sell them this stuff and they were making money off of it and profiting off of it, off of something that was supposed to be surrounded and centered around God. People were making it, doing it for selfish reasons, making it about themselves. They were making, trying to, trying to make money off of this. And so Jesus is, he's just furious by it. And so it tells us that he makes a cord, a whip, a cord, and he drives the animals out and he takes it another step further. And it says that he scatters the coins of the money changers and flips their tables over. He's not happy about what is, what is taking place and what is supposed to be God's house. So, he's just furious that these people are making a mockery of something that God had established. And so, the Jewish leaders and the people, they came to him because they weren't happy that he was driving out their animals and scattering their money everywhere. They were making a lot of money off of this. This was a good time of year for them. This was a good time of year for them to make money because, like I said, all these Jews from all over were having to come to Jerusalem or having to come here and participate in these feasts. They didn't have an option if they wanted to practice these Jewish ceremonies. They had to come to Jerusalem. And so they were making a lot of money because sometimes people, they couldn't afford to bring their animals with them or their animals couldn't make that journey. Like I said, Jesus was traveling around 100 miles to get there. So they would buy the animals once they got there. But these people were taking advantage of the Jews. They were taking, like I said, taking advantage of something that God had established. And Jesus was not happy. So these guys who were making money off of this, they're like, Jesus, hold up. Who do you think you are? What authority do you have to come in here and do this? What, it said, he, they said, what signs can you show us that you have authority to do this? And he tells them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. And at this point, people are looking at him like he is crazy. Because the guy says, it took us 46 years to build this temple. And you're going to raise it again in three days? I don't think so. You're crazy. And it, also, we learned too that the disciples didn't really even understand what he was saying. They were like, Jesus, how are you going to build this in three days? You know? But it says after he had risen again, the disciples remembered what he had said. Because Jesus wasn't talking about the temple. He was talking about himself. Because what Jesus is going to do in the future is he's going to die on the cross for our sins. He's going to make atonement for our sins. And he's going to make it so that you don't have to come to Jerusalem anymore to participate and make sacrifices for yourself. Participate in these religious feasts and make sacrifices. Jesus was going to he was going to get rid of all of that. And what was so hard for the Jews to understand was that he was going to change their entire way of life, their entire culture, their entire religious practice, everything that they've always done. He was going to just obliterate it by the sacrifice he was going to make. But they didn't understand that quite yet. And I always think it's interesting because even a couple stories over, we've talked about in our night class, we've talked about the Samaritan woman. And Jesus says something that I love to her. And uh, if you look over, it's just a couple page over in John chapter four, and verse 21, he said, woman, believe me, this time is coming where you will worship the father, neither on the mountain nor in Jerusalem. So he's, Jesus knows when he's talking to these people, he's knowing that a time is coming where this, this stuff that we've been participating in our whole lives, these Passovers, these like feast of booths, that's, there, that's coming to an end. I'm, I'm going to get rid of that because I'm going to make it so that you can worship God anywhere. You don't have to come here to worship God. You can worship God wherever you are. And while he was in Jerusalem, it says that he did many miracles and people believed in him, but he wasn't ready to entrust the people yet with what he was ready to give them. 
And we're going to learn more about that in the coming weeks. But I love this story of Jesus in the temple courts and him having this righteous anger to people who are making a mockery of something that God established. So without further ado, let's follow Jesus in this week's news broadcast. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for this special afternoon broadcast. It looks like the sun is about to go down, so we'll need to make this a quick news segment before the special Sabbath before Passover begins. There has been news of some commotion on the Temple Mount today, so let's throw it out to the field to get to the story. As crowds gathered in the courts of the Temple today to purchase their last-minute groceries for the Passover feasts and animals for a sacrifice, a relatively unknown rabbi or teacher showed up on the scene to throw tables and the Jewish leaders for a loop. Can you tell us what happened here today? Um, well, well, I was making so much money selling animals that people needed. And then, then this guy comes and scares all away all my animals, and he talks about his father's house. So weird. What can you tell us about the man who caused such a commotion here today? Well, after Jesus drove out all the money changers, people were asking him if he could prove that he had the authority to drive out all the people doing business here. He said, destroy this temple and I will build it again in three days. I mean, it took 46 years to build this place, and he thinks he can do it in three days? This guy is nuts. And he'll probably just disappear, and no one will even remember anything he says. What a fascinating development. It is our understanding this is the same man who just recently performed a miracle in Galilee. Allegedly, of course. His name is Jesus of Nazareth, and although he has been hard to find around Jeru Jerusalem over the past few days, there has been additional reports of him performing more miracles, and he is starting to gain a number of followers. That's actual people following him, not, a, not only on Twitter. We certainly will follow this Jesus with interest when we come back. Are your camels safe? Reports of a man dressed as, dressed as one in the desert have, have Pharisees concerned. Hope you guys enjoyed following Jesus in this week's news broadcast. For next week, we're going to follow Jesus as he performs a miraculous calming of the sea. Your homework assignment is to read Matthew chapter 8, 23 through 27, Mark chapter 4, 35 through 41, Luke chapter 8, 22 through 25. We're going to read this story from three of the different gospels. It gives us a different, a little bit of a different perspective on the same story. So we're going to read those. And then, like I said in the beginning, sixth graders, I'm going to be reaching out to you to help put the news broadcast together for next week. I'll see you guys later. And I look forward to watching and seeing where Jesus goes next.